In this video, I'm going to talk about the hardware and software requirements that you'll need to meet in order to install Operations Manager 2016. Although, if you're working with an older version of SCOM, you'll find the requirements are remarkably similar, so not a lot have changed. We're also going to discuss the ports that you'll need to be aware of, just in case you're going to have some of these components live behind firewalls. And if that sounds like you, then you'll need to know which ports these various components will want to talk on, or else you're going to have problems with agents talking to gateways or management servers. Now later on in this video, I'm also going to introduce you to the lab that we'll be building for these videos. So that way, you know up front the machines we'll be using so you can build them yourself if you'd like to follow along. But as a heads up, I will be using a domain controller, two management servers, and we're going to have to have a few databases of course, so we're going to need an operational database and a data warehouse and a reporting database. So I'm going to put all of these databases on a single server just for my own convenience, but in a production environment, I'd be looking to separate the operational database and the data warehouse to their own machines and potentially include some redundancy as well. Now, rather than just simply blurt out a bunch of requirements for Ops Manager here, we can use Microsoft's own website for that because this is most likely to be the most up-to-date source anyway. So just in case something changes, you're going to find what you need right here. Now as I move through some of these links, you'll see that this site covers all products for System Center, not just Ops Manager. But of course, we're only really concerned with Ops Manager at this stage. You'll see instead they provide you with a link to a sizing helper tool, which can assist you in determining what sort of hardware you need. So when you download this sizer tool, you'll see it's just an Excel spreadsheet that allows you to punch in how many agents you want to monitor, for example, and how long you want to keep the data for, and it'll calculate the recommended hardware specifications. So if we skip to, let's say, this tab here where it says 500 this is just using a scenario whereby if we're planning on managing up to 500 Windows agents, and for that, it suggests that we have an 8 gig of RAM for our management server and around 16 gig of RAM for our database servers. Now a bit further down here, you can also see we can configure how many servers we really have. So let's say we've got, instead of 500 here, which is the default, let's say we've got 200. And we'll leave the number of days for the data retention at seven. And you'll see here, it's now calculated around about a database of a little over three gig. Now for our data warehouse, let's also change it to say 200 computers. And we'll leave the retention for our data at 365. And this time you'll see it suggests around 130 gig database. So it's a pretty cool tool to look at and I'd strongly suggest you do download it, punch in the numbers that are relevant for your environment and use it as a baseline for the hardware you're planning out for your installation of SCOM. Now, as far as the server operating systems go, any of the Ops Manager components will work on Windows 2012 R2 or server 2016. Now for my lab here, we're gonna be using 2016 for all of the SCOM servers and our database server as well. And I'll also be using 2016 domain controllers. Although of course you can use whatever version you like. Now on our next tab here, the client operating system compatibility, it will show us all of the compatible operating systems for installing the SCOM console software. Now, I'm going to install it on my management server just for convenience for this series of videos. But truthfully, it's not best practice as it obviously does have some overhead, in fact, quite a bit of overhead when using the console. And we really want our management servers processing all the alerts and, and doing everything it needs to do without being bogged down by your users accessing the console. So for that reason, you might want to install it on a jump box or even your local workstation. And as you can see, everything from Windows 7 all the way through to Server 2016 is supported for installing the console. All right, next we have our SQL Server version compatibility. And we can see for our databases, the 64-bit editions of SQL Server 2012 supported, as well as SQL 2014. But we're gonna be using SQL Server 2016 in these videos. Let's just go with the latest. Now, if you're planning on using the web content, you'll need to have Silverlight version 5 installed on your workstation or whatever machine you're planning to browse that console with. And if you're also planning on making the web console available to anyone in your network, then you'll probably want to deploy Silverlight via group policy or SCCM, so that way everyone has the software and meets the requirements. And of course, uh, we're also going to need Internet Explorer version 11. 
Okay, and finally, we are going to need Windows PowerShell for our Ops Manager servers and our agents. And of course, most modern Windows operating systems already come with Windows PowerShell installed, so that requirement is probably already taken care of. Now, if you don't know what version of Windows PowerShell you're running, we can go and open up a PowerShell prompt. So let's just quickly do that. And if we type in $host.version and hit enter, that'll tell us the version we've got back there. Now, one of the most important things we'll need to do when deploying SCOM is install our agents. And SCOM 2016 supports agents running on Windows 2008 server and higher. And for the client operating systems, Windows Vista all the way into Windows 10 are supported. Now, if we also scroll down this window here, you'll be able to also see the Linux and Unix flavors that are supported, and you're going to find support for the most recent versions in this list. All right, well, those are the requirements, and they aren't really differing much from previous versions of SCOM. So the next thing we're going to look at in this video is the firewall ports that we'll need to think about before we deploy Operations Manager. Now, this is a page for Ops Manager 2012 granted, not 2016 that we're going to be working with, but that's okay. From a ports perspective, nothing's changed. Now, since there are a lot of components within Ops Manager, and these components will all need to communicate with all your devices on your network, there's going to be a lot of different conversations, a lot of ports open for this to work. Now, for some of you, you might choose to simply disable the Windows firewall in your network. Now, if that's the case, then it's probably not all that important to take in all these port requirements into consideration. But in my lab, rather than taking the easy way out, and I could just simply disable the Windows firewall for the domain profile, I'm going to go the hard way, in fact, and I'm going to add in firewall rules to open the required ports. So you're going to see I'm going to open specific ports on my SQL Server, specific ones on the management servers. I'm going to open up ports on the servers we're going to monitor, so the agents, so we can push agents out to them. And we'll see that in the videos as we start installing these things. So with some of these ports, obviously take note of what this web page tells you. And if you're in doubt when things maybe aren't working as intended, always do the basic troubleshooting things first and check that the required ports are open or SCOM obviously isn't going to work as intended. Now, if you do want a way of checking that your ports are open, you could use a tool like Telnet or Port Query. If you don't have those available, I've got a TCP port check script that you can use right here. So take a look, it'll help you out. All right, so going back to our system requirements for our firewall, uh, Microsoft obviously have provided us this nice table to show us the port requirements. So I'm only just going to take a quick look at some of the important ones. Now, the main port that we're really going to be interested in is our port 5723, and we'll see that down here, for our agents to talk to our management servers or our gateways. And truth be told, if you're deploying agents manually, this port 5723 is the only port you're going to need to be open from the agent to its assigned management server or gateway server. And I have seen a bit of misinformation out there asking, does this port, this TCP port 5723, need to be open both ways? The answer is no. You only need it open from the agent to its assigned gateway, or from the agent to a management server, or indeed from a gateway to another gateway, or a gateway to a management server. Now, I know that might sound a little bit confusing, but just think of the TCP traffic is one way. All right, now our databases, they are going to communicate um, on port 1433. And we can see our management servers will be talking to our operational database and our data warehouse server on that port. And so unless you've decided to run with a named instance, this port is going to be the default. Now our operations manager console is going to talk to our management servers on port 5724. And that might be good to know if you're going to install a copy of the console on your workstation, for example. And if we do plan on installing the web console, you can see our standard web ports, port 80 and 443, if we're going to be using SSL. Now, finally, at the bottom of this list, you'll see there is also a couple of ports here if we plan on monitoring Unix or Linux servers. Okay, now the last thing I want to cover in this video is the lab that we're going to build and work with over this video series. Now, obviously, since we're going to be installing Operations Manager into our domain, the first server we need to have is a domain controller. Now, I'm really only concerned with talking about SCOM through these videos. Obviously, that's the preference. That's what we're here for. But I'm going to run through a very quick installation of a domain controller, just for those of you that might be new to it, although I suspect that's probably none of you. 
Okay, so apart from our domain controller here, we are going to need at least a single management server. The main brains, if you like, of our operations manager deployment. Now, I've got a couple of Windows 2016 servers that we'll use to build two management servers. And obviously, these management servers will need to talk to an operations database server. So we'll just be creating that server again on a Windows 2016 server. And on this same SQL server, we're going to install the data warehouse and the reporting services as well, just to save space. But again, in a production environment, I'd most likely split these roles onto separate machines, depending on the size of your environment. Now, since the SQL server we'll be installing isn't technically an ops manager server as such, it doesn't maintain a health service, for example, it can also be, and will also be, an agent of the machine in our environment. So we are going to take our SQL server and we're going to monitor it as an agent. And we'll be installing the agent here for testing as we move through these videos. So at a minimum, we're going to be starting our lab with four machines. Although I can tell you right now, it's definitely going to grow as we progress through this course. Right, now we're at video three in this course and I don't know about you, but it's a little boring. <laughs> Sorry to say, we've just had the guidance and, and information and we really want to get into the stuff where we click around and we start doing something. So I'm going to stop the video here and we can move on to the next video where I promise you we're going to start installing something. So in this video, I've talked about what requirements we'll need to meet in order to install Ops Manager 2016. Now, we've also seen how our lab we'll be working with will be laid out, at least initially, um, but we can expect this to grow over the course of these videos as I start talking and introducing other monitoring scenarios that you might expect to experience in your own networks. So I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I'd like to thank you for watching.